It was the turning point of the Civil War, the Battle of Gettysburg. And while we've heard of men like General Lee and Pickett's famous charge, you've perhaps never heard of Father William Corby. It was here on July 2, 1863, that he prepared men for battle. Prior to the American Civil War, chaplains such as Corby were assigned to posts. But with large-scale warfare in the 1860s, both the Union and Confederate armies began to place chaplains with regiments in the field. There were thousands who answered the spiritual calling to assist the troops. Most people would think the chaplain's first duty is to have religious service. Actually, that was only one of their duties. And at the beginning, they did very little of that. Most of their duties was to minister to the sick and to the wounded. Many of the chaplains were older than the average soldier. They were often ordained men who had sponsorship from a local group. However, they did receive pay for their services. They were considered non-combatants, although many actually fought in action uh, during the Civil War. Uh, I know at least 11 Union chaplains that were killed in the Union Army in the Civil War. At least 14 chaplains in the Confederate Army killed in action in the Civil War. While their work was important, most of their names are not well known to us today. Perhaps one exception is a man honored with a monument on this battlefield. Father William Corby was probably the most well-known chaplain in the American Civil War, principally because he has a monument here on the Gettysburg battlefield. Corby was born in 1833. He attended Notre Dame, a new school in those days, and took his final vows as a priest in 1860. After the war, he returned to become president of the college, a position he held for 10 years. In the fall of 1861, he left his pastoral duties in South Bend to become the chaplain of the 88th New York, part of the Irish Brigade. Went through all the campaigns with them in some of the heaviest fighting in the American Civil War. At the Peninsula Campaign outside Richmond at the Battle of Antietam in September of 1862, at Fredericksburg in December of 1862, at Chancellorsville here at Gettysburg, and he was 29 years old. It was here at Gettysburg on July 2nd, 1863, that the 88th New York was called to help their comrades below Little Round Top at a place called the Wheat Field. This was a 20-acre uh, field of wheat at the time of the battle. In three hours of fighting, a portion of that field changed hands six times in hand-to-hand -hand fighting. There were over 4,000 men killed or wounded inside it. Corby understood the importance of the moment. His men were about to enter some of the fiercest fighting of the entire war. Right before these men went into action, he went to Colonel Patrick Kelly, the commander of the Irish Brigade, and he asked Colonel Kelly if he could give absolution. Colonel Kelly gave his consent. In the late afternoon, the men gathered before Corby. He stepped upon a rock before the brigade of over 500 men. Soldiers of all faith backgrounds bowed a knee on the field of battle. All understood the grave nature of what the next moments would bring. And this was the pose that he struck on July 2nd, 1863, as the Irish Brigade men knelt yeah. down around here. He raised his right hand, gave the general absolution. 40% of those on their knees would be killed, wounded, or captured in the next hour. Remember that the Catholic Church refuses a Christian burial to any man that turns his back on his foe or deserts his country. That's what he said. So before he sent them into that wheat field, he knew that many of the faces of the men that he were looking at, they weren't going to come back. These fields now lay quiet. They are a memorial to those who fought and died here. It was men like Corby and other chaplains who gave those men spiritual guidance during the most trying time of their life. Traveling the countryside, in Gettysburg, Pennsylvania, I'm Andrew McCray.